everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I wanna to show you how to paint Belle and Beast dancing together to finish off that fabulous rose bokeh background that you did. This is that great scene from the movie. I'm gonna explain every step of this process, every step of the way, and of course there's a traceable. So get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. I'd like you to be my guest in painting. So now that you've done the background painting, and if you're looking for that link, that's gonna be in the info card, that's the floating eye, and the description below. That's a really easy background to do, follow along with that. When that's dry, you can either sketch in the figures or use the traceable. If you're not drawing yet, I've got a link to a traceable that you can use right below, and of course it's not cheating. Any way that you create is an absolutely valid, awesome way to do it. So this 11 by 14 canvas, I've sketched it on. I use chalk because I find that goes over acrylic paint really, really well. There's lots of carbon papers and different things that you can use. Over here on the palette for Beauty and the Beast, I have Mars Black, Phthalo Blue, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Magenta, Yellow Ochre, Cad Yellow Medium. I have acrylic glazing liquid gloss. You can find it in one of these two. There's a new label, so it can look like this. This product is both a glaze and it slows drying, so it's an extender and a glaze. It's really wonderful. I like it a lot. And I have titanium white. I'm going to be using brushes for acrylic painting, and as I'm using them, I will tell you exactly what they are so you can find similar ones. But remember, you can use anything you have. I'm just sharing my art materials with you so you know what I'm doing to get the results that I have. Okay, so let's pick our first brush. We're gonna pick somebody sort of small and tiny so we can get into some smaller spaces. Right here I have a number two bright. This is a bristle on, and it has a really firm filament and a sharp edge. So that's what I'm looking for in my brush is something that will work these little tiny spaces. And I'm gonna be blocking in my painting right now using the darkest values to sort of create a puzzle of shapes to help me retain the sketch so that I can resolve it with different colors of paint as I'm working it out. Take your water. I'm gonna dip my brush in and drag off the extra. One of the big things that messes with artists and acrylic is how much water to put on the brush. And I like to have it be damp, but not, you know, sopping wet. And I'm gonna start with kind of a dark basic skin tone, which is a little quinacridone magenta and a little yellow oxide. So you can kind of see it's sort of rosy you add a little white to it. I'm gonna definitely get a color that's a little darker than I'm gonna be doing her skin for real. I added a little bit of water to improve the flow. And I'm gonna come in and just real fast paint inside the lines that I sketched. Now, you can always, if you have a boo-boo on this, go ahead and paint the background a different color. So let's put this aside here as we're doing it. I'm gonna add a little brown to my brush just to make it a little bit darker. You can see that next to the different two shades that they are. And I'm gonna come underneath her neck and I'm just trying to show that this is a little more in shadow and also give myself some space here. Painting around here. Very helpful to do that sometimes. Just create little roadmaps to yourself. I'm adding a little water to my paint, going back into my slightly lighter color. I'm doing what's called offloading, which is pressing the paint out of the brush so that I can have more of it as I go. Sometimes when I'm doing skin tones, I really like to mix up a large batch, but right now I'm just sketching in, in paint. This is sometimes called an underpainting. And this just lets me get that first layer, that base in of color that I'm looking to get so that I can come back with my more refined mixes and paint it in. I'm using the edge of my brush and just going inside here. Now, as I go, a lot of these chalk lines will paint out but if they don't, I can always come back with like a damp finger or a little Q-tip or a little cloth to get them out. Now I'm gonna come on the edge of my brush and I'm gonna flick out her first finger. I like to 
kind of put a curve into my fingers. Um, if you guys are comic fans, you'll remember this is really similar to uh, some comic characters, how they draw that, and I find it gives it a lot of action. I don't have to show every finger, right? But we're just having our hands played out there. And then I've got an arm coming up behind. There's not too much of her skin showing. So we're really just creating this base. She's got an arm tucked behind him. So I want to make sure I have that there. It's a subtle area, but it'll really help. Now I'm going to paint in his face and I can come in and be quite dark with this because we're going to be adding all this first. So I'm going to add a little black. Can you see that there? I pull out a little black, take it over my brown. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet to improve the flow. You can kind of see how that color is much darker than the ones that I've done. And I'm just going to start painting in the parts of his fur and face that are showing. When I was sketching him in, I liked all of his angles. When you're painting male figures, there's a lot more angles. I'm just painting in the lines that I drew. You can see on browns, they tend to be a little more transparent. And so sometimes if you don't know that ahead of time, you can really, really fuss with them going, why isn't it covering in a smooth, creamy way? And that's because they tend to do that a little less than some other colors. You can always check your paint tube and it will tell you how much that is. Now I'm going to not worry about this too much because I've still got to paint his jacket blue and we're going to be working some delicate edges through here. So I'm just kind of putting in that first layer that you can see him going in. There's his face. He's got a rush of hair coming back, so I'll use my brush directionality to keep track of that. A little black over here, a little burnt sienna. I'm not using the glazing liquid yet. That's what I'm going to be doing skin tones and blends, and that's what I'm going to really like it for on this piece. Coming along the edge of my brush up to his horn, curve on the inside line of his horn and just brush sweeping back. This will be the anchor for his hair and fur. The thing to think about on hair and fur is that the directionality of the hair and fur is important. So even so, try to remember that in your brush strokes and it will help you with a good foundation for your result. And we're going to just let that hair go down his back. Um, I did these these characters not from the back like I usually do because you guys have been asking me for this for a while now to do the figures more focused and I said that was okay I would do that. I'm going to add a little black in there. You can see it's not totally black it's just like a dark brown and I'm going to come in and put in the hair the horns real fast. Lots of details lots of stuff has to be done on all of this. But in painting, sometimes you just got to do that first, that first underpainting is important. And again, you can see how the sharpness of this brush is really helpful to me because then I'm not having to change brushes a lot to get a different job. But listen, if you do have to change brushes a lot, don't worry about it. It looks pretty nice. I'm going to get a slightly darker color, okay, right there, and do this horn that we're not seeing. It's a little bit off the side here. Hopefully, it had a nice vanishing point in it. When you're doing the transfer on this, um, Remember that sometimes acrylic uh, painting is very smooth and so some of the transfer papers don't like to work with it as easily as others. I'm going to get more of our just basic brown that we were using and I'm going to paint in his uh, claw here. Paw, claw, 
curses. They're such a problem. I will do the sharp part of the claw later with a smaller, more defined brush. It's too small really against her dress. And so it's a good time to just put it off until later. I'm going to not even worry about rinsing out my brush. I'm going to get some of my blue and add a little of the burnt sienna to it. And if I need to, I'm going to take some water. See how I just do that, swirl it around, and that improves flow. A lot of times people get frustrated with heavy body paint because they feel like it's so dry and it doesn't want to smoothly go across canvas, but that's really about adding medium and water when you need it. Here's another really cool tool. These are misters, and they do a really fine mist so they can keep your palette wet and not drying out on you so quickly. I'm going to just block in this jacket coat that he's got going. It's broad shoulders. I'll have to come back with some white here, but I want to put this blue base in first. It's okay to have this base where these two edges merge a little bit. I know for many of you this is a really important painting. Either the story spoke to you personally or you have somebody in your life that's a huge fan of it. So I just want to help you do great. I'm coming here in the forward end and I'm brushing it out. I will lighten the sleeve just a titch and I'll show you how I do that just so I can keep track of where it is. No point in doing all that hard work, getting it in just to have it disappear in the paint in. Just putting this all in. If when you're painting over your background, you're like, man, it feels like her paint is covering the canvas and mine isn't, that can be um, about the grade of paint, whether it's a student paint or a pro paint. I'm painting a professional paint, and one of the benefits of it is that, uh, professional, I guess what, it's so funny because we call it that, but you could just be anybody painting this paint. It's just about the pigment, the amount of pigment and the quality of the pigment in the paint. So, oftentimes I think it's perfectly okay for new painters to, as long as they're respecting their budget, get the best paint their budget can afford. In your budget. That's super important. It's gotta be in the budget, otherwise that takes all the fun and relax out of the painting. Oh, look what I just did. I just got white paint all over my finger. I don't know if you guys ever do that. I do this a lot. This is my VidCon mermaid. She's helping me do this. She's reassuring me. Going. Just making sure that this coat is really luxurious. But you can see even with my really good paint, like the green's kind of showing through. It's definitely gonna be a few coats. Getting this all covered. Pull some little blue here, pull a little brown here. Get the water, swirl it around. So you can see like here's the maneuver. So I'm dipping in here and I don't drag off on this one. I take it to swirl it because this bristle on doesn't over pool water because it's made for acrylic paint. Okay. I don't have to worry about it over logging and that's what you're wanting in your acrylic brushes. Whatever brushes you're painting with, you want them to hold the right amount of water for the medium you're using. Were I painting with watercolor, I would want brushes that hold, held the right amount of paint for watercolor. And then, of course, none for oil, because you would not generally be using water in your oil painting. So the sleeve, just take a smidge of this white over here, and you can kind of see that against the darker blue. And I'm just lightening the sleeve a bit. We put some blue into it, just making it a slightly different paint color. See, I'm offloading there. Can reload. And then you'll catch it as these two play against each other. So it's still dark for us to add highlights to, but it's slightly a different blue than the rest of the coat, making it easy for me to see all of the zones that I have in my painting. This is my sleeve zone. How are you guys doing today? Feeling all right? 
If you're feeling any tension from your life or just from the act of painting, remember to breathe it out. Remember to just let it go. I'm going to make sure that I have ample room on the sleeve for his arm. Um, I have a really good friend that does uh, fashion illustration. Really good. We go way back a couple conventions. Anyways, <laughs> she's really delightful and talented. And she talked to me a lot about make sure there's an armhole and about the wearability of the figures and the clothes. And it really stuck with me. Um, so I was definitely more present to that. It's why it's nice when artists talk to each other because sometimes we even to each other bring out these things. I'm sort of just offloading pigment here and there from this. Right, you can see me doing this. This is just a way of not wasting my paint and just also <laughs> covering up. Now I'm going to rinse this out and you're like, ah, oh, but you haven't put the white lace over here. And the reason is, again, I'm going to do a lot of detail on this fur and everything here and then I'm going to lace it. Then I'm going to do it after that's put in. So now we have her dress and her hair. So I'm going to go into her hair, which I think I'm going to definitely do a little brown and black again together. There we go. A little warmer than we did Beast's face. So you can see that there. I'm going to just, again, think about the hairline and directionality of the hair. So that as I paint her, she has a natural flow. So hair is a couple things. Hair is a shape, hair has value, and hair has directionality. But you're never ever going to paint every single little hair. You'll, you'll be very tired before you realize, oh, this is not possible. So that's why when you're painting hair, be sure and paint the shape first. And then what we'll do is we'll have some hairs that we talk about individually. Right? Some hairs that we talk about individually that'll make it feel like we painted a lot of individual hairs, but in fact we do not. Don't tell anyone. No, no, tell everyone. Tell everyone, come and paint and make your own Beauty and the Beast because you can do it. You can do this, guys. This is just about being patient and hanging in. So we have her hair. We have an arm. What do we have left that we have to think about? We really have to think about her dress. So I'm going to paint in her dress, and I'm going to do an interesting thing. The first thing I'm going to do this is because we're going to try to get ruffles in her dress. So I'm going to take a little of my brown over to my yellow ochre. See that right there? Little brown, little yellow ochre. Pretty warm from the yellow. And when I say warm, what I mean is that where the color would be on a color wheel. Closer to the yellows and reds. And I'm going to come along and I'm going to sketch in my ruffle. So I'm on the edge of my brush, sketching in my ruffle. See, as I'm going along my zone, right? I'm going to come underneath his thumb. And the back side of her back, I'm going to do dark like this and maybe a little bit up the sleeve. I'm going to bring the first ruffle of the skirt. Okay, then I'm going to pull a line up. We have this right here. And we're going to say there's a little line up right here. So it goes up, down, up, line here. Now at some point there's going to be a corresponding shadow here that I'm going to show you how to paint in. But right now we're just giving ourselves the general sense of where it is. So we have another little skirt here that comes down, goes back, goes forward. It's almost like an S. See how not static these lines are. This line is going up, coming forward, down. I'm going to paint this upward line 
curve this in down. Curving that out. There's a thing happening here. And then I'm going to go right under here, under the thumb. And it covers some of her hand. So see, some of the hand is tucked back and some of it is forward over the dress. This creates space in this piece that isn't really here, interestingly enough. A little more brown into my yellow where I need it, offloading, which keeps this from going up my brush into my ferrule. Now, where this ruffle is and that ruffle is, go ahead and tuck a little line in. You can even make that dark so you know where it was. Similar thing here, tuck that back. Grab a little more paint. This line right here, because this is going to be a shadow value that you've got to maintain. This is all going to be about these shadows that you're putting into this dress, but you're showing that there are these sort of like highlights and lowlights. I'm putting a little shadow right here. You can already see that these ruffles are sort of happening on her. Now, I'm going to flip this over so that when I'm working this, I'm not trying to work at the edge of my canvas and I'm not straining my body and I'm not straining my brain. There we go. That tucked out ruffle, this tucked out ruffle, and then the dress is going to come off here. And I'm just going to flip it around again. Why? And I'm going to keep doing that because it's going to help me in my goal. I'm picking up some just yellow ochre and I'm going to do her front of the bodice in this pure yellow ochre. All right. So another thing that that friend and told me was about if the strap is in one place on the shoulder and you're going to have to catch the video because we collabed so you got to catch the video. She's like you got to put the other strap exactly in the same place. You got to decide, are you making a halter? What are you making? I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. So you can see I've really made an effort to make sure that my straps are in the same space on the shoulder. Now that I have that in, I can ease some of my effort here. I'm rinsing out my brush really well. I'm going to wipe it off and put it aside. And I'm going to grab a slightly bigger brush. Mm -hmm -hmm. I'm going to go this big. This is a number four filbert by Black Pearl. It's a slightly less firm bristle, but it's still firm enough for heavy body paint and has a good edge to it. And it's a little blendier. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to get this wet. Take off a little bit of the extra water. Just grab some yellow ochre. I might even at this point use some of my glazing so that it slows down the drying time because I need this to hang in with me for a minute. And I'm going to just paint in all of this. What you're going to notice right away with all ochres and oxides is they're somewhat transparent. This one is a little more opaque than the synthetic version. But you've got many coats coming. If you're having a terrible time like like say right here where you know you've got a, a like having a hard time, grab a little bit of your white and put it into your ochre. You're going to light it just a shade. It's just a shade lighter, but watch this. Look at that because titanium white is a powerhouse. So it will really help you if you're having a hard time. It can also help you with color shift, which is your paint darkening. All right, so we're coming around here. We're going to paint this ruffle a little bit highlightier. We're just painting this all in with this base dark gold yellow. When we start putting in the um, cad yellow, I may miss my palette. You're going to love how it all pops. You're going to be like, gosh, that's really pretty. And I'm going to be like, yes, it is so pretty. 
but sometimes you just gotta put the base coat in. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying this. I am enjoying sharing it with you. I hope you're pulling your best Beauty and the Beast feelings out. Really, really saying kind things to yourself about your painting. Like right now, if you took a minute, I'm gonna flip this over so I have an easier time, and think of one nice thing you can say to yourself about your painting. It's a good time to do it. And if some of this is hard, and you're finding saying nice things about your painting a little bit challenging, something to remember is that being a beginner is a wonderful thing. You only get to be a beginner for so long because eventually you're just going to learn the skills. It happens for everybody. Um, I love all the people who've hung in with me many, many paintings and seeing their journey and seeing them grow as artists. And the truth is, is they just don't stay a beginner forever. And it reminds me a little bit of my youngest daughter growing up. So she's wonderful where she's at now. She's five. But there is something magical about being 12 months being new. So even if you're struggling, remember that you're in magical territory that will not last forever. Eventually you'll look at a painting and break it down layer by layer and understand how it's constructed. But right now, the magic and mystery all of this, you don't get to keep that forever. Enjoy it. All right, so I painted in this yellow over and you can see how the transparencies help me keep the sort of brown sketch I've made. I still have plenty of room to lighten it up and brighten it up. We're about halfway there. All right. Rinsing this brush out, putting it to the side. Let's work on Beast here. So we're gonna come over here and I'm going to make some dark colors. I'm going to take a little of my black over to my brown. I'll pull some of these out so you sort of see them a little bit too as we go. And I'm going to put in some of his features more assertively. I'm going to come to the brow line here, come under the brow. I need to show the shadow of his eye socket. If you've been doing the big art quest, we've been working on faces. You know that we've got to do that. We've got to pull that shadow down a little bit along the bridge of the nose. Kind of flare it out. That's going to be there. Then he's going to have another strong shadow right under his nose. Super important. And since his nose was based on a line, they made this a little bit wider. And you're going to want to do that too. Then right here at the lip, a little shadow, don't we? Then you can have another little one here. And I, right, I kind of curve it along here. I like come up the nose and kind of imagine it going up here towards the airline. I'm going to do a light dry sketch and start pulling a little bit of a shadow for the cheekbone. It's like his face appeared out of nowhere. I'm gonna get a little more of my black, take it over to my brown, I need my glazing medium, I'm gonna use it, and I'm gonna make sure that I come underneath the horn, and I pop in the twist shadow. So that's at this outer edge. There we go, look at that. Maybe just right here at the hairline, just a little shadow as well to really help show that he's there. Come back with this dark color and I think I could even, there we go. Rinse that out some. Now I'm gonna find not my lightest shade, but my next lightest value. So I don't have 
my darkest, darkest value yet. I don't have my lightest, lightest value. I'm going to the shades next to them. I'm going to take a little of this brown and black that I have going here, and I'm gonna come over to my yellow ochre, right? And so it's not just this bright pigment. And I'm gonna come along the top of the brow line with this. Run the front. I'm going to, there's a ridge along here. I'm gonna highlight that. I definitely want to highlight some of this very strong nose. I may even be coming back with, you can imagine, some smaller brushes here. And I'm just starting to put in and say, hey, this stuff is happening. I'll refine it and you can refine it as you're going. Along here on the hair, I can come along here. Start putting some of that in. Just these little bits are really helping. Get a little of this. And very dry, just put a little of it into his little beard here. Rinse this out a bit. I actually have quite dark hands here, so I don't have to go into this lighter area. So what I'm going to do is just add some more burnt sienna to my black mixture over here, where it's the black and the brown. And I'm going to be sure that I come along here. Maybe the just a highlight on the top of the thumb, and then one a little bit on the inside of the hand. Come back. Get a little more black. You can see that there. There's going to be a lot of lace over this, but I still need to think about it and define it. Give it shape by shading. Just to maybe pop that a little bit, I might cheat and come over into my yellow. Not really cheating, but just to say right here, just the hint of it. Because this will be defined by its shadow. I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to work out a little of these horns and I'm going to get into some fiddly bits in a minute. So look at this, this burnt sienna here. I'm going to get just a smidge of blue over to it. If it's too blue, which means if you get too much blue, it's going to come across green and you want it, you want the blue just to knock the brown back a bit, but not so much you can't see it. I'm going to come to the top of this. So the shadow value is still dark enough to feel like a shadow value. This is like a second coat here. Top of the horn. I'm going to take this and start working this a little bit into the highlight we worked. See, painting sometimes is just about stamina. I have a lot of stamina. So I'm like, okay, let's get into these layers. I'm putting a little shadow right under the lip. Look at that. Oh, it's getting a face. I'm going to come, there's a shadow I need to have. This hair needs to be a little bit darker. I'm even getting some black. Then the hair on top of it as if this has been exposed to sun. These are things that the artists think about when they design these characters. That his hair would be sun bleached on the top because what happens to lions and big cats and bears? What happens to their hairs? That's how you create fantasy creatures is you study those things. A little more of this. I'm gonna come here and be like, all right, let's just keep Telling the story. We're going to keep it until this is a beautiful couple. You guys have been asking for something that was a little more challenge. Ah, I give it to you. All right, a little more of this rich color in the fur. You can see it's slightly lighter shade than the shadow. Still coming here, working out my planes. Okay. 
Now I want to come right here at the top of the lip. I just wiped off my brush with my towel and I'm going to come with just a little of this oxide. I'm going to put a little of this brown mixture I have into it. But I need it to be lighter. That's a dry brush coming right under here. See that? Just working that. Keep playing with these things. Swooping this around. Pretty light right here because he's got this little braid. Let me get back into my yellow paint so a little more definition going along up here. It's even going to be like a little highlight that's right there. A little bit to this outer edge coming in. You guys did Groot with me, you know what you're in for. This needs even more shadow. So a little brown over to my black. Underneath here, that darker color. Just gonna keep working this for a second. So it has shape. What I'm trying to create is the shape of the fur. A little more black. Pull that in. Just that shape right there. Super important. You can always come back with the highlight, and I will. My so what's going to happen is I'm going to keep working out these values and then I'm going to hit my highest highlight, my lowest low light, and then all of a sudden it's going to be like, boom, face. It's crazy. All right, let's work out some of this coat. So I know I need a light blue up at the coat, and the coat is, you could do just Prussian blue, but I'm going to do the phthalo and a little black, and I'm going to add some white right here. So the trick is to have so little black that it grays it a bit, but you're still very blue. That way the coat feels aged, but still rich. Here's this highlight. I'm going to dry brush it over the top. And they'll come down here a little bit. A little more white and blue to this outside edge. We're going to pull at an angle up, up, and this is going to help us create the effect of the jacket. Then you can come on the top of the arm here, pulling that down. See that there? Crazy how that goes. Yes, we've got to do some gold figure and some leaf and some cuff and everything. But honestly, sometimes, get some just white, white, white. Just being a little bit nonspecific helps you. More white, white, white. Say white, white, white. You can do this. Whoever you're giving this to, whoever you're making this for, this is in you. You've got this. I'm going to draw this little line across, but not all the way to the bottom. Up to the top, up over the top. And add a little more fabric highlight, right maybe to the elbow, pulling that out, and then coming across here, helping it just be a thing. A little bit here. Definitely, definitely pulling this out in the back of the coat, even though I know. Even though I know gonna have a lot to do here. Now I'm gonna get some of my just blue. Got some black on my finger again. It's just so funny how I do that. I'm gonna put some of my just thalo blue on my brush and I'm just pulling this in very painterly. And that means just expressively because I'm gonna come in with some patterns of my gold. I want this to be a base. I want it to feel rich and finished. You can see how this is just starting to pull. A little blue and black, making sure that under the sleeve is quite dark.
next to her dress is quite dark, right between here and here. A little blue and black, like a midnight black. We're going to come up through here. This will be quite dark. It's a deep shadow between the two of them. Not a lot of light. Weird important things you've got to notice as an artist when you're trying to tell their story. Right over here. Keep that dark color, pulling it up. And you can bring that here. So his coat's getting very blue, isn't it? He's feeling very much like who he is. Take a little of your blue blue. The front of the sleeve. Go ahead and bring a little crease back here. A little shadow crease right there. You're creating little rivers and valleys, little highlights and lowlights. Dark right there. I might even add a little shadow at that cuff. Look at him. He's just got this gorgeous jacket now. He's happening. He's so happening. I'm going to pull this to the side and I'm going to get a more detailed brush. And you think to yourself, how more detail can it get? It can get real detailed. So I'm going to pull, this is a zero round black pearl. It has a really nice detailed edge that really has some authority. I'll push the paint and I'm going to get right into my black here. I'm going to come into a couple spaces and I'm going to start defining my shadows. I'm going to come under the nose. Right there. I'm going to make sure that my finger is clear of paint because I will drag paint all over my canvas. Check your pinkies if you're a pinky rester like I am. I'm going to come under the eye. I'm going to paint the lid here. A little bit, but the less I say, the better. Just about the shadow. Just about the shadow. And I will add a little white highlight, but just at the very end, and that's going to pull all that in. I'm going to take the tear duct down. And some of the hair here. The interesting thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just define this for a little bit. I'm going to come underneath here, just define that lip a little bit. All right? Some of these low lights of these hairs can come around here. We're going to tuck some hair back. If you need to get your brush wet, so how I do this is get my brush wet. Again, it's for acrylics. It's not going to over soak. If this were not a good acrylic brush, if it was like not for heavy body paint, it would be overly soft, pull in too much water and not give me a good line. Just pulling these hairs as I'm observing them. There's a lot of references for Beast. Feel like you can use them anytime you need. See, I'm just coming along doing the the hairs here. It's amazing how it just all starts to pop together. A little black hair. There is some stuff along. First of all, I want to come along the bottom of this spectacularly fabulous horn structure. Right? Still pulling in. Another trick you can do is fluid paint if you're just having a bad day. Now, along his horn, he has a sort of ridge. I'm going to just add that a little bit. I can kind of see it here. I'll still have to come back and do his nail. I'm 
just going to just come and add a little bit of these, sort of like this hair, right here. Even though I know so much of it's going to be covered by the ruffle, I still want to make sure that I think about it. Now that I've got all this worked out, I'm going to put out a little of my yellow ochre closer to my white. I may have skinning even with my efforts to mist, and skinning is where the paint has started to cure. It's just because I go a long time in my studio under really dry oh, hot lights. So I'm taking a little of my white into my yellow ochre. I'm, if I need to get some water, I'll do that, dip in there and swirl around. I've got some nice highlights. I can come along the top of his nose. That's quite bright. And come along in the front of his forehead here. And these highlights here. Just doing this. I'm not going to draw every hair, right? I'm drawing the shape, texture. Maybe a little bit right here. Still long hair, just trying to tell that story. It's a hairy beast. So just continuing to tell that story. I'm hoping this is helping you in your own goal to tell your own Beauty and the Beast story. Can add a few of these little hairs here. This is really going to be about just finding up here. Just go along. There's a little highlight. See, he's starting to happen. A little of this yellow, maybe a little more yellow this time. Let's just come along and just a few. Just the flow like water of the hair. Don't take the highlights too far forward because they wouldn't be there. A bunch of them would be up here between the horns and his forehead. Definitely want to show that. Now there's a little place that I can come in. I can come in with just a little of the ochre and maybe the red here I'm seeing. The burnt sienna and your yellow ochre. And I'm going to just very carefully take that slightly higher highlight and make a slightly humanizing nostril. A smidge of lead. Still talking about the lip. Just working this. I'm actually getting pretty happy with this. Come into your red. I'm going to just add some highlights. Just a pop of this pure burnt sienna to the horn. And then I'm going to come into my yellow hair. And just on this outside Edge. I'm going to come along and line this, trying to show the light at the top of it and that it's slightly, slightly reflective along here too. Maybe just right at the top of his thumb a little bit of this highlight. Just on the inside of the not everywhere because we're going to come here. So I'm feeling pretty happy with him. I'm going to wipe off my yellow but not rinse off my brush because here's the trick. I don't want white white. I want off white for what I'm about to do. Hopefully I'm going to do it right. I'm going to come back here and just add just a dot. See? Just a little corner. There we go. And I'm going to come into the lip right here. Just that highlight. And I really feel like I've kind of told his story. So I'm adding these little hairs. I'm just thinking about him fairly well. Like, I really like how he's come in. 
Well, I've got my little brush out. One of the things that I'm going to want to do. Now you can be really fiddly and create roses and vines. I'm going to just create some little kind of rosettes. Little, little swirling filigree for the painting. And that's just me working with the tip of the brush and swirling it around to say there's some embroidery. I'm not going to tell the whole embroidery story. I could. I could do that. You can do that too if you want to. I'm going to just say that he's got some gold embroidery. See? Not all the embroidery, just some of the embroidery. If I go deep down and I recreate the pattern, so here's the thing, I know I haven't looked at you guys for a minute. If I go deep down and I recreate the pattern, then I gotta recreate the pattern. This is something for you to decide as an artist. If you're like, man, I really need it to be the exact rose pattern that I saw in the movie, you're gonna need to get reference photos, you're gonna need to zoom in, and you're gonna need to really create it. it it's, it's one of those places you can't kind of go halfway. You gotta be like, I'm being arty and it's very groovy, or you got to be like, I'm drilled down and I'm telling you this story. So you got to kind of find that space for yourself. I am going to be very groovy and kind of tell you the story. <laughs> Just saying. I'm going to talk about some gold on this beautiful blue coat, but I'm not going to do all the gold. That's not happening. All the stuff, I'm just going to tell you some of the story about who he is. I'm going to rinse out this detail brush really well. And because I want it to last a long time, I'm going to really make sure I have the paint out of it. And then I re-pull it to a point as much as possible so that as it's drying, it doesn't lose its point. I'm going to come back into my number two bright with the stiff bristles. I'm going to come where I have a little of my gold and a little of my white, but I'm going to make a very light color. You can see how light it is. And I'm going to pull this out from the cuff a little bit. I'm going to come under the neck here. And this is a very dry brush, which means I don't have a lot of water in the brush. I'm lightly, lightly touching. Right? And I'm going to just say, whoo, I've got a little bit of a scarf. Just a line down, line over, line down, line over. Dry brush, dry brush, dry brush. Maybe another little line down over. So some of it's showing through. I'll tuck a little line over here, saying there's some of it here. Right? Same thing here. I'm going to be just like, hey. Super light over your hand. Because lace, you can see through. So now it has more of a lacy feel. We don't got to worry about that so much. That's all we got to do for him. Are you guys ready to do Bell? I hope you guys are ready to do Bell. I'm rinsing out my brush. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do Bell, and she's going to be kind of a similar thing to Beast. It's going to be like putting in her features, using my detail brushes there, kind of warming up her skin tone, lightening it up, and then um, getting her hair and her dress in. And then we're going to be there, and whoever you're giving this to, their heart is going to melt, break, and come back together again because they're going to be so in love with this painting, and I know you're doing really great. So let me help you get the rest of this in. We're going to get our number two out again, and we're going to come and work on our skin tones again. So I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone and a little of my yellow ochre, and we're just trying to make a really nice rosy color between these two. This is skin tone simple. This is a very easy, fair person skin tone. I have a whole series of videos on skin tones. There's a lot of great videos on skin tones, so don't feel like you're stuck. All right, so when I have this nice base kind of rosetta, like little tomato rose color, it's pinker than yellow. I'm gonna really get into my white here and make a very, very light color. Very, very light. I'm going to come here, and at the front of her forehead, I'm going to come along the front of her forehead, and I'm just going to pull out this nice light highlight. 
Oh, there we go. She's going to be more challenging. She's going to feel more challenging than Beast because her features are people features. And so therefore your brain's going to have so many more opinions. I'm going to make another little highlight right here about everything about her. Everything about her your brain's going to have so many more opinions on. Her nose, her eyes, just everything. Just creating this nice little highlight here. Just creating a front of the face highlight, pulling it back. We're going to just be coming back, working, working, working this as much as we can. I'm going to pull a nice highlight right here. And I may even with her, because I'm going to have to be going through so many highlights and low lights, get out my palette knife real quick. You can just use any tool you have where you can mix the paint together in a large amount and mix a somewhat base amount of my skin tone. Let's actually take our quinacridone, get a smidge of our cad yellow, work those together to warm that up. See how we're doing there? Get some of our yellow ochre. We need more, we'll get it. All right. I'm going to add some of my glazing medium to this so it dries slowly. So we have this sort of base. And I can even get more of my yellow ochre into that. So out comes the yellow ochre. Smidge it out. We're doing good. Fold some of this in here. There we go. Now, take a little of your white to the side over here. You're going to make your nice little highlight or your start of one. It's sort of mixed into this. Add a little of the yellow ochre to it. So it's white and yellow ochre. It's picked up some of the pink, but we're not worried. Okay, and so you can highlight from this really easily, but it's not a bright white. All right, and I'm going to wipe off my palette knife here a bit. I'm going to get a little brown. And I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to mix it into my brown. And then that can be my shadow for her face. Put a little of my glazing medium so it doesn't dry out on me. So not my lightest colors, not my darkest colors, but my range is there. And then what I can do is I can grab my number zero round again. I can get it a little bit wet. And I'll come into say my dark zone here, my darkest, darkest color that I've got. Loading that up. And I can come in and I can very carefully start talking about the little stories I'm seeing in her face. One of the things I've got to do is I've got to shade under her nose, just like I did Beast. The shadow under her nose is super important. Then coming back from the front of her brow, I actually have to start the shadow of her eye. Bringing the lid here, there's a crease shadow there. And there's just sort of this little shadow right here. It's really interesting in faces because the eye will actually be quite light. She's got an ear and the shadow of her ear will come behind her ear. So we actually see her ear from the shadow that it casts and along her jawline. Get some more of my dark space so I can come right under her chin. And she, she's that neat thing where the jawline is going to come up. And we're going to have like this sort of triangle shadow underneath here. See that happening? It's starting to happen. Crazy how it does. So we're coming under here. All right, we're going to come right under there. And there's another little shadow near the hair. All in shadow too, so it's just about finding these highlights and shadows. I can take her main skin tone color and go right into my white now very easily because I've mixed them all three near each other. 
and then pull my little neck highlight to make sure I'm keeping her neck defined. So her neck is in the highlight. And that her neck tendon is in the highlight. So it's just a little dance between those two values. Right? While you've got the highlight, you can come in and say, all right, there's a there's definitely a highlight on the cheek I've got to worry about. Coming around here. Top of the ear, top of the face, top of the nose, right through here. Rinse out. Let's find some more shadows as we build our piece together. So let's get back into our shadow color. We're going to come right under the lip, just like we did with him, and pull that shadow right under her lip right here. It's like they just pop out of nowhere, isn't it? Look at her face come together. Super fun stuff. If you need to get a little black in there for something like the shadow of the ear, just bring it over to your darkest color. And my little advice on the ear is, is that the less you tell the better, but there's certain things you want to tell. So like the little cavity right there. Just telling this little story. Just taking this. I just like messing with it. It's fun for me. Now I've got this dark color right here that I can come and talk about with her eye again right under here. I'm scooping that back. my black there. Just come along here. Just that little bit there. And add a little teeny tiny bit of that right there. Maybe another little smidge there. Just a dust up under the lip. We're doing pretty good. Now I'm going to get right into my highlight, which is my yellow ochre and my white. And I need to come along to the top of the nose and highlight just the tip there and a little area down the nostril and along the ridge. I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to get my mid skin tone and mix it with just a little bit of white, but I need it to be darker than her base skin tone that I painted in at first. I'm going to come along here and go under that highlight, get a little more of this dark color. And I need to start creating the shadow. That's too much paint, so I'm going to wipe off. I'm going to just Shave in, keeping my shadow under the nose. It's really about making sure I'm balancing between my highlights and those shadows. Go back and get another little highlight. You can see where I'm like kind of like back and forth, back and forth, but it's okay. And then where you need that shadow, go back and get it. Add a little black to it if you need it. Here. There we go. Let's come up above the eye. Make that first little dot. And I'm gonna bring you're gonna bring that back to about here. Soft arc. Get some white on your brush. I don't rinse it for a reason. And come right here and I'm going to lighten the inside corner of the eye. Show her eye. And then I'm going to get a little black and I might get some brown, but mostly black. And try to get just right on the tip.
fast. There we go. There we go, Belle. We're getting there. You're getting there, sweetie. I'm going to take some black, come over to my dark color. This is my deep dark shadow. I'm going to work my hands just a little bit. So I'm going to come under the wrist and then on the inside of the thumb just to show that curve. I want to just make sure I fling out that finger. So even though they're going behind the dress, I want to kind of show that that's there. And I'm going to come with just a little bit of that shadow color right here under the arm. Right here. Long hair. Going to just make sure you got that nice deep shadow right there. And grab a little more of it. And just a little bit of cleavage. We have to pull this long muscle here. This actually will be all in dark shadow, but I'm going to use a bigger brush for that. If you need to get your glaze so that it's not so pigmented, that is okay to do. And then we're definitely, definitely going to want to take this line in. It's going to come up and around the ear, just a little bit of a shadow here. It's just a lot we're doing, I know. If you want to know more about how to do stuff like this, we have this big art quest that we do where we work on all these things. Now I'm going to take my bigger, broader brush that I've got some of these fine details in. And I'm going to start working what I've got going on. So I'm going to pull out a little of my mid-tone pigment here. And I'm going to start creating the skin tone using my white. And that's going to be about finding a very soft range of this. Use your glaze. I'm going to start pulling some of the story that I have. There we go. So the story will soften through here. Soften the chin. I'm going to pull that highlight down on the chin. Even the shadow, I'm going to soften it a little bit. I'm going to get my glaze out. It's there. Some of it I'm going to really bring to task, but some of it I'm just not. So I'm trying to keep this more chill. Let's pull out a little of this glaze here, this, this mid-tone color, and glaze it. Go back under the chin. And blend. And blend. All right, I'm blend back here at the temple. I know, it's the thing, but you got this. A reference photo. I got you. I'm going to make sure that this sort of darker color, which is a little bit of this black in our dark skin tone, I'm going to make sure that underneath the arm and coming down the arm, we have a nice shadow. We can totally do this. Come down the arm, nice little shadow. And this arm definitely is going to have a lot of shadow on it. In fact, your darkest tone will probably be the arm, and then it will have another deeper shadow into it where you get back into the black just a little bit, smidge it over here. 
can come and shade this. Losing some of her dress, I'll have to put it back. But that is okay, I don't mind. We're just working our values. Shadow here. It's okay for this area by the hair to be quite dark. You can get actually quite dark right here. Around the air. I'll wipe off my brush a little bit. Just this is very dark right here. That's okay. Go right under her dress and even darken this and right his hand. You can darken this. You can cast a shadow. Feel like you can do it. I'm gonna rinse up my brush a little bit. I'm gonna get into my skin tone and into my highlight color. I'm gonna come along the top, her arm, and just blend this a little bit. If you need the glaze, and I like the glaze, because the only way to blend the acrylic paint is either by glazing or wet into wet. So I'm using glazing right now. A little bit on the front here. So I'm just pulling this down for her. I might work my shadow under the hand a little bit. Like, oh no, let's put that hand more in shadow. All right, a little more under here. All right, rinsing, rinsing, rinsing. I'm inclined at this point to take a little of my quinacridone over here into a little of my base skin tone and make a slightly rosier color and then get into my light, not white, my ochre and white and my glaze and start rosying up her aspect. Adding a little blush to her. right here, the shoulder. I don't want her to disappear into the background. It's just okay. Highlight here, just want the front of the neck to have a nice highlight. I'm rinse this out. I'm gonna get a little of my quinacridone and a little of my glaze. And I'm gonna come into her lip. And just warm that and right into her eye. Add a little bit there. I'm going to rinse that out, get a little of my black on my brush. Just add these little, little bits right here and I'm going to just the titch her nostril. Just work this stuff out, just a titch. So once I'm happy with her, I'm gonna start working her hair. You know, and that's really just like, are you happy? Like you go until you're happy, until you feel like, oh, I really like this, I'm really liking how this looks. And that's when you go to. So I'm gonna get uh, some of my uh, burnt sienna. 
And I'm going to, interestingly enough, grab some quinacridone into it. Right here. And a little of my cad yellow, which I'm probably going to have to put out my cad yellow again. And this is going to make this sort of really orange brown. I'm going to get my glazing liquid in there. And I'm going to start pulling in this warm hair color. Remember, we're not drawing every hair, we're drawing the shape of hair, right? Here, the hair will be quite dark, but there will be spots flowing down where the hair has lots of like highlights and is maybe a little sun kissed. It's okay to have a little bit of that. I'm going to take a little of my black over to my brown. I'm going to start getting my dark brown value. This is like a chocolate brown. I'm going to pull a little bit of it here and there in the hair. Let it flow through. These are the low lights. The hair pulling through. A little of the brown and black. Not pure black, but just very dark. Paying attention to the directionality, almost to the dress. And once we're in the dress, we have done it. And you have done it. I don't know how many of you have done it, but I hope you'll tell me if you did it. Share it on our Facebook page and our website. Be like, I totally painted Belle and Beast. I did it. You know, you can always use my girl from behind as a simpler way to do this if you want. So I'm going to do what I did before, which is take a little of my yellow ochre over to my brown, some white to that. A little highlight color. I'm going to come in and highlight her hair. Not a lot. Don't do a lot. She's dark hair. Just enough to talk about motion and the fact that, you know, she maybe had some sunlight. I think it's important, if you can, to take a little ribbon of yellow and sort of tuck it into her hair. Just a touch I feel you should do, but it's entirely up to you. Let's get into our number four filbert and paint in her dress. Now let's see how our yellow is. Oh, I still have some yellow, so we're okay. I'm gonna go ahead and work some of my anti-drying medium in here because I really, really want to not have problems with it. I might add a little burnt sienna over here. So I have a couple values that I can work with. And I'm going to take the yellow, mix it into this, and let's create some of the shadow in the folds that we might possibly have. I'm going to come along anywhere that there's a shadow, and I'm going to add just this deep dark yellow. You can I'm going to come like along here and say that there's a shadow under here and where this fold is. There's certainly some shadow under here and inside here. Under the ruffle. Right here. We kind of put them in with our burnt sienna, didn't we? And now we're just going to go fatten those shadows out. 
under her hand. I feel like under this ruffle we should have a pretty good shadow going. So I may flip the canvas over so I have a nicer access to all of it. Just making sure I've got a nice shadow. One right there. Pull it down. Once we come with the brighter yellow, it's really going to pop. Like her dress is going to become so yellow. And we want to make sure that we have those value studies in so we don't lose all that hard work that we did planning our ruffles. We've got that nice brown in there. Once that's all in and you're sure you've got it and we know we have it there, without rinsing your brush, go ahead and grab some of the yellow that you have and start coming in and adding it. I'm going to add just a little bit to the front of the strap, pulling it around the bodice, front of this ruffle, some of this just yellow. It's real light. Like I'm just like letting it streak, letting what's underneath shine through because it's sort of chiffon-y. And we're going to do this yellow and white highlight which is going to make it all just pop around the edges where we do definition. Right now we're just trying to create this energetic painterly dress that speaks to a dance that changes everything. So I'm just going to keep adding this like yellow. The brush hasn't been rinsed out, but the yellow is still pretty bright into it. I'm going to come to the front of this ruffle. I'm just adding the highlights at the top of the ruffle where I imagine the light is striking it. Right? And it's amazing how when you do that between the shadow and your highlights, her dress starts to just come to life. Dresses in general just come to life. They're really fun to paint, I think. A little bit right there. Now, I'm going to have to flip it over to get, I'm just brushing this up into her. Because again, she's got these like little shadows. And her beautiful yellow, yellow dress. It's Belle's signature. Yellow is a beautiful color if you can wear it. All right, now the last final highlight that gets to make the dress really, really pop is going to be coming in. We need to make sure that we're really happy with everything. You know, she's sort of glowing. Let's take a look at her. How are we feeling? She just needs that last zhuzh, doesn't she? So let's take a little of our yellow out. I'm going to pull it over here towards the white. I'm going to get some of my white on there. And it's going to make this bright ducky color. I'm going to come to the front of her dress. I'm going to just lightly brush this down. Front of this ruffle. And right to this edge right here. Some in here. Definitely want some across her bodice. Just a little of that. There we go, right on that ruffle. A little yellow, and white. In here. Just brightening it up. And once I'm really happy with that, I'll just take some pops of the real CAD and just add it. Just putting it here and there. Just 
so that she can be the belle she is. All right, guys. We've done quite a quite a thing today, haven't we? The last little thing that I do want to do before I sign is I want to make sure that I tip his claw right there so that he feels like himself. So I'm going to get some black. Tip out a claw. I'm going to get my smaller brush right here. Yellow is really transparent. I'm going to put some yellow on it. Yellow is really transparent. So even as I come under here around his claw, the brown from underneath is going to show through here. Still creating a shadow for me, but making sure that she feels like the yellow princess that she actually is back into my detail brush because I get to sign this. This was really a project. Every once in a while on the channel we like to do some big projects and then we like to do some 12 minute projects so we just keep varying it up and we don't get bored in our creative process because we need to have challenges and then we need to have easy days. So hopefully this was a challenging but rewarding day. I cannot wait to see what you painted. You know when I sign my paintings I really like to think about where the signature goes. I'm going to put it along the back of her dress here that's very much you know my way of doing that but you sign it your way paint it your way this is your art journey at the end of the day I hope you're proud of yourself I hope you gave yourself this challenge and are surprised where you got if not remember you can join the big art quest get better faces and things like this be good to yourself seriously be good to each other and I want to see you with the easel really soon bye bye